Hello everybody, hope you guys are doing well today. Today, for after a very long time of not making any videos, I decided to make a video, and this time it's going to be another long haul with the Boeing 767 by Flight Factory and X-Plane 10. Um, in this flight, it's about a 13 hour and 25 minute flight due to the winds. Without the winds, it would be approximately 11 hours and 25 minutes, so added about 2 hours um, because of the wind. Our aircraft is absolutely heavy. It is actually, according to Flight Factor, it is above its gross weight, maximum gross weight. According to PFPX, it's not. So we need to be careful here. I don't tr truly trust Flight Factor, nor do I really any developer except for Flight J7 ICG to be accurate. Um, but um, yeah, so PFPX, according to PFPX 767, it is not. Uh, um, above its gross weight, but according to Flight Factor, it it is over its gross weight. So we're going to be careful and make sure everything is set as it should be. And our VFCs are going to be very high. Um, I already set everything up. The FMC, the pre-flight procedures have all been complete. We are we've already done the pre-flight uh, checklist, and if we had ADC, we would have already gotten our clearance. And so all we need to do is get ready for push and start. We're going to start at APU, set a seatbelt sign, and all the, all those things. So our departure today um, is the Seattle 5 departure. It is a uh, vector departure, and uh, because we're not having any bad winds nor bad weather, um, we can uh, take a certain route, a route, whatever you want to pronounce. Um, it is a vectored, and because I'm not very familiar with the Seattle airspace and don't know how departure would handle our situation at the Seattle 4 departure, I'm going to make my own uh, route routing to get to uh, Vancouver VOR, and that is our um, basically our transition um, VOR. Um, expected run, uh, depart runway one six left, and um, the thing about one six left is if we would turn left, uh, we would uh, our VOR would be across the airport, so we'd have to cross the airport anyways. But if we turn right, we'll just cross the airport momentarily, and uh, we'll be out of there in no time. The problem about turning right is what if we had traffic and bad weather? The chances of them having to go around are high, and turning right would not be the right option. First of all, we do not have traffic, so there's no big deal anyways. But we still like to go a little bit more realistic, and so we're, we, w um, we would turn left if there'd be bad weather conditions. Because there are no bad weather conditions, and we would not expect to uh, go around anytime soon, uh, we can go ahead and turn right immediately, cr um, basically fly past the other 16 runways, 16 center, 16 right, and we turn right over to Vancouver VOR. So our the plan is to uh, continue at uh, 164, heading 164, or tracking 164, which is um, runway heading almost about one degree off and then we're going to turn right uh, about approximately 90 degrees once we reach approximately 1,000 feet and uh, from there on we're going to uh, continue directly to Vancouver VOR um, yeah so again we're very heavy we're only going to probably make flight level 300 and um, because we're flying in to uh, oh yeah, I haven't told you where I'm flying, but I'm probably no. I'm pretty sure you guys know through the title that we're flying to Shang Shanghai, and uh, they require to fly in meters, and so we'd expect to fl uh, climb to flight level 371 as a step climb, and uh, doing that, of course, in steps. So we'd probably go to 35 correction 320, then 351, and then 371. So three step climbs of 2,000 feet. Um, but because I'm flying overnight, I'm, you guys won't need, know that, you guys won't see it anyways, um, since I start the second part during the descent, but I do have to keep that in mind to make sure that I'm at a uh, perfect uh, altitude in meters, which is crazy that they do that, um, we're a world and we should all be united. So Delta Airlines flight 58 India through ATC and 58 Niner um, through basically booking and through tickets. Alright, so with all that done and rip ears, we're going to continue 
and start the APU. It's going to wait until the run light has illuminated or is illuminated and then we can set the APU selector manually to on. I'm going to see if I can turn that down just a tad. All right. And so we can see our RPM up here. Once it reaches approximately 100%, we're expecting a uh, bus transfer. We're going to turn off the external power. Actually, we, we are not expecting a bus transfer because the external power has priority over the APU, apparently, according to Flight Factor and um, according to the FCOM as well. So um, we're going to turn off external power once we have the RPM at 100%. Oh, that is now. And so the APU will now take over. We're going to wait about a minute before applying the APU bleed. And before we apply the APU bleed, uh, we're going to turn off our packs and disconnect the uh, air supply, the ground air supply. So let me see if I can uh, tune down the volume just a tad here. All right. It's been about a minute. And we can go ahead and... Uh, Seatbelt sign on. We're not feeling as as you can see. Our fuel's at 151.8 um, tons, but in uh, pounds, so 151,800 pounds of fuel, which is insane. It really is. Um, and I believe this is the max range that this aircraft could fly. I mean, it is very heavy. I'm not sure um, how much more it could take if uh, no passengers would be on board or anything like that but it's very full. It is very full. It is so full that we will require a PAX off takeoff as well, which is something new um, that I had never shown before. And uh, so that'd be pretty interesting. Uh, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> okay. So we waited about a minute. Let's go and set, reset our time. Come on. There we go. And we're going to turn off our PAX. And we're going to contact ground and disconnect as you can see in the red so we're quite heavy um, so ground power unit and high press unit can come off we're also going to get rid of this rid of this and rid of this we're going to close our doors here okay so we're going to apply the APU bleed verify positive pressure and apply both packs this APU can handle both packs and the 757 I would only consider the right pack Okay, so with that uh, completed, we are going to continue with our MCDU. We've set everything up except for the performance page, um, and that is what we're going to do now. So let's go into init ref and set our zero fuel weight. Very simple, just click once, and we got a gross weight of 416.3, and a reserve is going to be, that is a good question, let me get my flight plan out. As you guys can see, PFPX, our reserve weight is alternate 3.3 plus 2.1 is 5.4. So 5.4 reserves, and we'll accept that flight level 300. Our cost index we're going to use is 45. We would do a step climb, but unfortunately it does not have out of step climb like PMDG-07 does. And so we're going to ignore that and we're going to do it once we get back. So flaps, 5. Center of gravity is 21%. Trim of 5.2, so we'll set that once we pressurize the hydraulics. And our D-rate today, that is a good question. Let's see what P uh, Top Cat gave us. No D-rate, and I would totally do the same. And that I totally agree with. So we're going to leave no D-rate, we're going to leave it as it is, and you can see our V-speeds are absolutely high. Okay, we're just going to set a couple more things. Our runway slope is down 0.7%, and our wind oh, acceleration, we're going to do 3,000. Noise abatement departure procedure 1. And our winds, uh, for better, for uh, a better calculation of our V-speeds, I'm not sure if they uh, included the calculation uh, V1 correction, but uh, 
we'll just put it in anyways. 280 at 5. We'll have a crosswind or slight tailwind. Four knots from the right. Okay, so 165, 170, and 175. And um, one thing I wish they would change is that you could do this manually, but unfortunately you can't. So we're going to leave that. L nav, V nav, we're going to keep this arm. L nav, uh, we're going to arm once we proceed to a direct uh, Vancouver. And V nav, we'll leave off and we'll just do, do it manually as well. Until we're established. Okay. Our speeds are set here as well. And so at this time, we would close all the doors, remove all ground services, and continue. So it looks like it's starting to get dark out because I'm starting to see our lighting is coming up. Yep. So it's starting to get dark outside. And um, let's hope for a nice sunset. Okay. Contact ground one more time. Hopefully. We'll con disconnect. Might as well disconnect everything and close it all. And uh, we'll get right onto it. We do have the parking brake set, so there's no issue with there. Okay, do we request pushback? Um, if we haven't gotten start clearance, we ask for push and start. Um, and once we get clearance for that, we're going to do our before start procedures so the anti collision light can come on. We're going to pressurize hydraulics once we get clearance on from ground, but because we don't have that simulation, we're just going to go ahead and do that right away. Right system first, then center, then left. Okay, pressure light disengaged. Or perfect. And then the left system. Okay, fuel. Everything comes on. And the pressure lights are normal no engines are running. Okay. So let's make sure our FMS pages are set. Take off fly uh correction. Pilot flying has a takeoff ref page and the pilot non flying or pilot pilot monitoring will have the lex page. Okay. And we're gonna set our trim. So if we set five point two and I need to set that through here. I hope it does not have a premature um rotation. So we'll set that in, 5.2. Okay. And the before start checklist. Fuel, 151.7 tons, checked. Passenger signs are set. Windows are locked. MCP V2175, heading 163, and initial altitude of 7,000 is checked. Takeoff thrust is not derated. Takeoff speeds V1165, VR170, and V2175. Theory pre-flight is completed. Rudder and ALN trim is free on zero. Tasking and takeoff briefing is completed. Flight deck door is locked and red anti-collision light is on. Before start checklist is completed. And um, so we can push back. I'm going to go ahead and use the tug master. I'm going to call him up. Alright, so let's turn off our packs. Starting with pack one and pack two. And uh, start our engines right now, starting it with engine number two.
Okay, I would monitor the engine start, but because we also have a pushback going, we can't. Very unrealistic. This is not a pushback truck simulator. This is a uh, this is a uh, flight simulator. So please, developers, Flight Factor, please, please adopt the FlyJSIM system. So much better. But nope, Flight Factor is too stubborn. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, anyways. Okay. Number two is started successfully, starting into number one. Okay, successful engine start. That's an annoying sound. I need to get that tuned down. And so, anti-ice is required, so we're going to go ahead and uh, turn on the engine anti-ice. Okay. Packs back to auto. Pack 2 on. APU bleed off. and isolation valve. Oh, wrong one, sorry. Left and right isolation valve off. There we go. Never made that mistake before. Okay, maybe you can come off as well. Set our flaps to five. And flight control check. Full forward, full back, neutral. Full left, Full right, neutral. Rudder full left, rudder full right, neutral. Flight control check is completed. Transponder to TARA. And we request taxi at this time. Once we get clearance, we can go set our lights. So we'll set our taxi lights here. and duty before taxi checklist. So anti-ice is actually on. Should be on as required. Isolation valve switches are off as required. Recall is checked. Auto brake RTO ground equipment is clear. Okay, cancel those. And start the first officer's clock. Let's release the parking brake, and if everything is accurately simulated, we should not move on our own, but we are, which could have to contact Flight Factor for that. We're so heavy, we would not move by ourselves, even at these engines. These engines are not as strong as you think. But on the 757, I'm, um, I wouldn't accept it either, but I know that the engines are very strong for that for the 757, so I'd accept it more. And look at those nice shadows. I wish they were crisper though, but hey, could be worse. Alright, so I'm going to guys uh, give you um, a time, probably right now, 
So you can guys can skip to that, and that is where I'll start talking again for the takeoff. So we'll see you there.
Alright guys, welcome back. We're just going to do the before takeoff procedure, so we we'll get right into it. So weather radar, we're going to go and turn on. And we're just going to put it on plus two. Also, I'm going to turn off engine anti-ice because... Um, Okay, it's doing itself that's because our temperature is rising and we don't have any visible moisture really. There's just a few clouds. I'm not expecting anything uh, dangerous uh, for this flight. I'm going to turn it right off. It is not required. Okay. As you can see, no visible moisture for our weather radar. Well, no moisture at all, not just visible. Okay, clouds are set, wing anti ice is off, departure briefing has been completed, we've already done that before. And so we're going to do the before takeoff checklist. Well, takeoff briefing has been reviewed, packs are on. Um, we're going to turn them off right now. We said this is going to be a uh, packs off takeoff. Flaps are set, sailor trim is set, flight controls are checked, and cabin is secured. So we are cleared to line up, and so we're going to do that right now. Approaching 1-6 left, that is checked. Thank you, uh, on way advisory. Okay, so we don't want to take up any runway, so we're going to make this as precise as we can. strobe light on. Start right here. Okay, we're going to set our parking brake just so we don't roll away. When we turn off lights on, taxi light off, nose gear light on. Okay, so we are clear for takeoff, so we're going to start our clock. And we're going to set our landing lights on. Okay, because this is a very heavy aircraft, we are fully packed, and it is not the longest runway in the world, we are going to uh, hold our brakes f um, for a little bit while we advance our thrust overs and then release. Yarn. Eighty knots, start the whole check. Rotate premature rotation because it's flight factor. Did we just touch on it? Positive rate gear up. Thousand feet. Say we uh, turn. So let's do that. One thousand five hundred. Mandate. 
and 3,000 feet radial. Increase our speed. Set it to 230. Two and we're going to set our heading to 320. Last one. Pack 2 coming on. Flaps up, pack one coming on. Can't direct. L nav, gear down, art. I'm gonna break this back. And just look at that. A quick screenshot. Very nice. Okay. All right, back to business. You're clear to climb flight level 300. Our ATC would give us 260 if we requested, so we're going to go and set that because we are very heavy. Gears up and off, exterior lights. Wow, those are good. Left drop, L nav, uh, it's engaged. So the after takeoff checklist. Okay, everything looks good. Uh, altimeters will set um, because we are cleared up above our transition altitude. We can go and set those as standard now, and we'll do that. So two nine or nine or two on both sides, and two nine or nine or two. Perfect. Checked. So after takeoff checklist is completed. The reason why I'm leaving VNAF off is because uh, the VNAF system on this aircraft is not very accurate and it will want to go back to 240, which obviously we cannot do. So we're going to leave it as is and do it manually for now. We'll set VNAV once we pass 10,000 feet. for uh, seatbelt signs still on on for now because we are passing clouds and there m is a possibility of turbulence and so we'll leave it as is for now check our progress page making sure that our top of cruise is not too far off and that we can handle three zeros room we're going to go to climb here okay go and erase our fix Everything looks good there. Okay, and here this is all. We're going to check our pressurization. We are climbing at a steady rate. Our cabin altitude is already quite high, but um, our rate seems to be lowering, so that is good. And our differential pressure still has a lot of wiggle room, so we're good to go there. 
its pressurize this, uh, pressurization system in the 767 and 757 of Flight Factor are not very uh, accurate and do have quite a bit of issues, but um, but I think they're being fixed as we speak. And decrease that, so we do have actually some moisture, um, but our temperature is fine, and we, we're not expecting anything bad. Okay. Also check our fuel flow, make sure that it's within limits. We are expecting high fuel flow because we are heavy and we do require a lot of thrust. As you can see our N1 is 101.7%. Uh, we need to watch out that it doesn't exceed um, our maximum because we could damage the engine and possibly cause an engine failure, fire, or anything like that. And that is something we do not want if we're this heavy. Or even if we're not heavy, we don't want it. So. Can you believe this is X-Plane 10 still? It still looks absolutely phenomenal. Alright, I'm going to say that is it for today. With that, I'm going to release the seatbelts and release you guys from this video. I, ho I hope you guys enjoyed. Something different. Uh, I talked this time. And I will see you in the second video, hopefully, in part two, where we'll be landing in Shanghai. I've never landed in Shanghai before. I've never, f I've never flown in, Jap uh, in um, Asia before. So, something new. And I'm excited. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next part. And uh, peace out.